Excuse me, everyone. Excuse me. Have your attention. Yeah, I just wanted to thank all of you for coming to the YTD family Thanksgiving party. It's great to see all of you. Uh, yeah, cousins uh, Julius and Debbie are in all the way from Pennsylvania. You guys are super, super. Uncle Ernie's around here somewhere. Um, I give him a wide berth if possible for your own safety. And thanks to everyone who brought food and really chipped in. Uh, there's plenty to go around, so eat up. And because uh, you know what Grandpa Gallagher is going to do to the leftovers if we don't. Most importantly, don't forget that if you hand somebody a snack, make sure it's something they would eat. And as always, don't forget to ask them. You tried it! Try Dad, a Thanksgiving feast. I'm Nick Novak with my pals Chad Hancock. Howdy. Nick Geiger. Hello, everyone. Guys, it's Thanksgiving time, that amazing time of year when we get together with family and friends and talk about all we are thankful for. Are, are you, uh, anything in particular that you guys are thankful for in the snacking world? I'll tell you what I'm not thank- thankful for is like we got this, um, baby oatmeal for my daughter to try. And uh, she didn't really like it, so I'm like, I'll try it. Because it's a, like a big fucking jar, right? They only come in these big jars. There's no way she's going to eat this all. So I try putting it into my overnight oatmeal, and that shit was nasty. Came out as this like super thick sludge of like chia seed, oatmeal powder. Like It was so gross. Uh, so pro tip, don't eat baby food. <laughs> all right, huh? You heard it here, folks. You heard it here. <laughs> well, I guess we're going to have to scratch episode 81, which is going to be baby food. <laughs> what have you been What have you been putting back recently, Geiger? Me? What, yeah. what haven't I been putting back? I've been putting back lots. Um, baby food? You know, bitches, money, weed. Oh, so, nah, no, that's You're true. putting sorry, those just... things back? I'm, not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think, I'm but, putting that money back. I put that money back in the bank. I'm putting that money back into the economy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm driving that lady back to the bar and telling her to treat herself better and have more <laughs> self-respect than to hang out with me. Novak, you sent a pic earlier today of something I'm thankful for, which is it's October when we're recording this right now, and Reese's pumpkins are out, and they are outstanding. So I've been putting those back. I've been eating spicy chips of all different kinds, like jalapeno flavored chips and things. I'm really liking that. So then I'm putting that back into my mouth in it in my back, I guess. <laughs> it touches my back from the inside. Is that how it works? It just fills up There's your no body. There's no Reese's turkey. I think they need to change that up. No, because it goes because after Halloween all the Christmas stuff hits the shelves, right? Like so you'll see yeah. the trees like as soon as the pumpkins are gone. So you could have like a twenty pound Reese like chocolate shell and you stuff it with peanut butter and stuffing and cook it for Thanksgiving. Where the gap is is over the summer because you have you know, you have the the Reese's pumpkin in the fall, then you have the tree in the over the winter, then you have the heart for Valentine's Day, and then you have the egg for Easter, but there's no like <laughs> you know, Reese's American flag for July 4th or like Reese's veteran with his leg blown off for Memorial Day or anything like that. <laughs> I bet you that won't even get one leg. I'm pretty, <laughs> I'm, pre- I'm pretty sure we established that there were a good 60 plus Reese's products to pick from. And if you <laughs> can't find one to fill your extra months. Then... Okay, guys. Okay, get this. Can you believe this? Number 74 is legless veteran. Now, look, I like legless <laughs> veterans and I like Reese's, but it should be lower than 74. Uh, yeah. um, so, Geiger and I, we were recently at, um, today actually, as we're recording this, Geiger's daughter turned six years old. Congratulations to her. Um, yes, so, indeed. Tomorrow, technically, but thank you. Yeah. We. Way to not die of dysentery to Geiger's daughter. That's the only thing you can kill children. She's got both legs, too. <laughs> she's got both <laughs> legs. She's not a veteran of anything, really, other than surviving me, I guess. So we're chatting sort of by the entrance while the kids are getting ready. It's at a uh, at a place called, like, a jump zone type of place, which is just a trampoline park. They're all over the country now, a very popular thing. Um, we're just chatting, 
and a guy walks up just interrupts our conversation and it really like a loud wide-eyed man with a big gray goatee and says how do you guys know each other and so we what'd you say my tagline was we've been best friends for 20 years (laughs) so so this guy uh is the dad of one of my daughter's friends from school and I had met him last night, actually, because uh-huh. her birthday party was at Chuck E. Cheese last night. So I, when I got home from um, a flight, I went and picked my daughter up at Chuck E. Cheese, and I met this guy. Novak, how does he know you uh, again? He's he yeah, he goes to the same church I go to, so I just seen his face, and he recognized me. So I, I mean, he had a reason for coming up to us. And then he 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 drops his kid off and starts to walk away because um, you can sometimes it's like a drop off and this guy's deciding to do that <laughs> and guy goes oh take it off and he goes i am he turns around again wild-eyed i am really tired i'm going to sleep in my car <laughs> 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 is this oh. guy homeless or <laughs> uh, i'll watch your kid oh by the way he had two legs though so it wasn't one of the, the fourth of july situations but <laughs> it's, it's not what you're thinking he's a nice guy but it was a little strange to, the, to tell me Here's my kid. Watch him for three hours. I'm going to go sleep in the car outside. <laughs> he didn't. We're joking. Sure. He didn't have to tell us that. He could say, I'm going to run to the store or I got it. You know, I got some stuff to do. So, but yeah, he chose to share that. And we were talking at this park about how fun it would be. How we, there's still something inside you as an adult. You, you see kids flying around in these trampolines. And you know you're not supposed to go jumping, flying in between them and knocking kids over. But there's something like it that doesn't leave you. I don't know if it's more as a man or just as a human being that you want to go jumping all over those trampolines. Like it's killing you not to be able to do it. So I have I have actually like kind of two stories related to that. The first is we have one of those trampoline parks here not too far from where I work. And like my whole department went like they rented it out one time for like just like a, an offsite or whatever. And so we all went to this like trampoline park and like we had it to ourselves. And so th- they had a couple different rooms at the place. Like one of them, there was trampolines on the walls and it was like sort of divided so that you played like dodgeball, like t- two teams, like just bouncing on trampolines and like whipping balls at each other. That was pretty fun. And then there was another room that just had like trampolines and then like, you could sort of run up one of the walls and jump off a trampoline into this huge pit of like foam squares. And I remember doing that. Like I went and went, did a huge belly flop, like into the foam squares. And then you kind of have to like sort of swim your way back to the edge. And then like I get out and like one of my coworkers is like, uh, try not to think about how many kids have pissed in those foam squares. And I'm like, why didn't you tell me that before I went flying face first into them? (laughs) But yeah, I mean, that was like super fun. Just like jumping on those tramp. It's super, so tiring though. And then the second one that was, that's kind of similar actually was, um, I was down in San Diego with my wife and one of her friends, uh, was having a birthday party for her son. Her son was like turning, I don't know, eight or something like that. So we go over to the birthday party cause she invited us. We weren't crashing and they have a huge like inflatable bounce house. You know what I mean? And I, I always like I never really went to any parties where they had those big inflatable bounce houses when I was a kid. So I, I feel like I kind of missed out. But that's another thing where I always thought like, oh, that's like sort of kind of fun. But you definitely can't go into a bounce house when there's a bunch of little kids in there because you will murder like you will <laughs> n- plow through them and just there'll be bodies flying. So we waited. And then there was a time where all the kids left the bounce house because there was like a clown that was doing face paint or he was making balloon animals. And so all the kids lined up for that. And so the bounce house is empty. And so my wife looks at me and she's like, you want to go in the bounce house now? And I'm like, yes. So we run over, we get in the bounce house. It's just the two of us. We're like jumping around in it. And then we notice that like the walls are kind of like starting to close in on us. And like (laughs) you broke the bounce house. My wife's friend's husband comes running over and he's like, get out, get out. And like, I there's like a, a wherever the tube hooks up to inflate the air, you're supposed to like Velcro and like zip it closed. And we had been like jumping around so hard that we had popped that open. And like, it was slowly like deflating around us and like, we were going to get trapped inside. 
So yeah, we my fat ass broke a bounce house. Did that clown beat the shit out of you? <laughs> yeah. They ended up just like hooking it back up and like reinflating it, so the kids like were able to enjoy it once again. But we were banned from it. When you mentioned the clown, I was picturing this story was gonna go. You you got in the bounce house and you started jumping, like facing away from the door, like saying, Hey honey, this is so fun, right? And then she's not answering. And you're like, honey? And then you turn around slowly and the clown is zipping up the bounce house door, just staring at you. <laughs> zipping up the bounce house door and unzipping his trouser. <laughs> yeah, I totally thought this was yet another in a long series of debating clown stories. <laughs> You know, that's my life. It's just one masturbating clown after another. <laughs> that's why you go to McDonald's so often, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, in, the, in the other story, I definitely have an issue with how many kids are pissing in the foam pit. Yeah, I don't think there's... <laughs> I, I that They do that, right? Don't like little kids, they all piss in the ball pits and like everything else, right? It's just like... Why do they of... piss in there? Maybe that's they're not they pissing say. at all. I know, <laughs> I I don't know, they either kids... potty trained or wearing diapers. <laughs> <laughs> don't kids just piss everywhere? Isn't that what kids do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What is your daughter doing? Just like just walking around, no pants on, just peeing everywhere she goes in public? Sure. <laughs> I, would give, I, I would give you that there's a, probably a lot of clowns beating off into the pit, but I don't think it's like kids pissing. Yeah, when we went to, uh, we hired Strokes the Clown to come over. <laughs> it was pretty uncomfortable. He did not specify what kind of balloon animals he made. <laughs> we were like, oh, look, he's puffing up something that looks like a giant. T- oh, that's his actual penis. <laughs> it's a condom, not a balloon. <laughs> <laughs> he's not blowing it. He's just covering yeah. his penis did, with it. He, has, he comes in, he's like, just got this big bag of balloons. And you're like, oh, I didn't know Trojan made balloons. <laughs> 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 they still say happy birthday on him. You, Gago, that clown wasn't blowing it up. He was just putting it on his penis. He was just rolling it on his cock. It was like, oh, wow, that balloon's sl- starting to grow. Oh, wait, that's because his dick is inside it. He's visibly erect. That's what it's called now. That's the move when, you, when you're like getting ready to go for your lady. You know, you're like, uh, you're getting naked and then you're like, excuse me, I just need to blow up the old balloon. <laughs> yeah. Make some balloon animals. Yeah, no, I went, uh, when we went to visit some friends in Michigan this summer, we just went to one of those trampoline parks so there's no party or anything but i did the little there's like a thing like an old american gladiator style thing where you go on this little like ledge against someone else and you have a big stick with two big paddings on either side and you try to knock the other one off and my on son, an inflatable thing yeah and my son and i did it and then like it's surrounded by foam pit yeah and i kicked his ass i mean my, i'm stronger and i have longer <laughs> arms you know i beat the shit out of him i he? owned my son he was like i got you daddy and i just jabbed him right in the chest he went down like a bitch uh and so and then i was like fell off and then but he was like scampered over the top of the foam and got up and ready and i'm like laboring over to the side like literally it feels like every time i move i sink farther into the foam and finally i just remember like i just like jake play with someone else like go on without me like i couldn't get over to the side tell betsy that life insurance will pay her out did you just see him walk off with strokes to clown you're like no, <laughs> no, no. That's the thing. Like all of a sudden, I felt like uh, something like nipping at my heels under the foam, and I was like, "What's that?" And then suddenly, I could hear like a condom wrapper open. I was like, "What?" And I was looking around, <laughs> and like strokes rose up out of the foam behind me, and, like pulled me down, and started uh, violently sexually assaulting me. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't it true that the last thing that you saw before, like you were looking up and you just saw your son standing on the edge of the phone pit, just pissing right in, in your general direction. <laughs> and I, as I went down, strokes carried me to hell. I was like, Chad was right. Was like, <laughs> Even though we hadn't had this conversation yet. <laughs> right. I saw into the future. You think if I had saw into the future, I could have avoided strokes. But <laughs> There's no avoiding strokes. Well, one, uh, one, guy you would not invite to your thanksgiving meal is strokes the clown but we're gonna eat some thanksgiving foods today and rate them <laughs> the least thanksgiving entry hey well <laughs> it's nothing to do with thanksgiving uh, <laughs> how do i talk about this <laughs> murderous uh, sexual assaulting clown and transition to thanksgiving meal <laughs>
Much like Strokes the Clown stuffed me under that foam, you stuff a turkey <laughs> on Thanksgiving, right, folks? Thanksgiving snacks. It's like you were getting stuffed by Strokes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. More like a turfucking, am I right? <laughs> All right, so we, we rate our snacks on a five-point scale. A love debt, like debt, indifferent to debt, dislike debt, and hate debt. And we're doing four today because we've got... Uh, we're celebrating the Thanksgiving feast. So uh, let's start just with the little appetizers and go with these pretzels. Um, we've got pumpkin spice pretzels from Archer Farms. And Archer Arch, Archer Farms is the Target brand, right? Correct. Okay. And they're orange. So and... these are just like coated in some kind of orange goo, right? Like a, oh, it says it's a white fudge coating. Oh, it's like a chocolate covered pretzel, but for pumpkin. They spice. are an unnatural color. Yeah, it's a very off-putting orange. It's an off-putting flavor as well. Now, while we eat these, I do have I do have something that's f- sort of food related. I need to ask you guys. So, I had this dispute with my wife, and I want you, I want you guys to settle it. This is a very very serious argument that we have, which is why I'm bringing it up on our comedy podcast. So, my wife likes the Wendy Williams show and the Marriage. <laughs> walk away <laughs> and wendy was doing this segment where it was like she was pretending to be a judge over like some disputes that that people were having and it was like these two friends and they were always com- the, like the one was complaining because when they went out to eat the other one would always get like super basic foods like she'd eat off the kids menu like they'd go to a fancy restaurant and her friend would just order a hot dog or something and so she was getting you know all pissed off at her friend about it and Wendy, like when she makes these judgments, she has these like clearly like pre-written like quote unquote jokes that she says. And for this one, she advised that like, oh, just let your friend order whatever she wants to eat. And she says, because what's more important, the friendship or the eat ship? That was that was the joke she made. So I said, like, OK, that's like really bad. Like, why did she say eat ship? She should have said food ship, right? Friendship or food ship. Like, it sounds better. That's, like, clearly a punch-up of the... Like, it's a funnier, right? And my wife disagrees. She thinks eat ship is funnier than food ship. What do you guys think? Oh, <sighs> well, uh, it's, I mean, food ship is the better answer. I, eat ship should never have made it past the first draft. It doesn't... There's, It's awful. There's, yeah, there's yeah. probably other things that are worse that, that are... That might be still be worse than food ship, but be much better than eat ship. It's not close. Eat ship, the tense is all messed up. It doesn't sound anything like the word friend. It doesn't roll off the tongue. <laughs> it's not nearly as earth-shatteringly clever <laughs> as food ship. I'm not saying food ship is funny either. Like, it's not funny, no matter what, but it's funnier, right? Like, I'm right. saying I'm saying Wendy Williams should hire me as her writer. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Wendy Williams starts doing a lot of Gallagher material for some reason. <laughs> 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 Wendy Williams walks out and is like, "What's more important, the friendship or?" And then, like, a c- masturbating clown comes up behind her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's Strokes! Everyone clap for Strokes! Um, yeah, I think I'm with Novak. You should end this marriage not because of each person food chip, just because Wendy Williams. I, so I recently saw Chad, and I can attest. I came over his house, and Wendy Williams was frozen on the TiVo, not herself, but the show. I was like, oh my god, they're not only does they watch and they record them, they record them and watch them later. That's no good. I think that's like the only TiVo recording is like that and Judge Judy. Because <laughs> I I don't I don't have anything on there anymore. I guess I still have the good place, but that's about it. All right. Ooh. Geiger, I'm gonna start you uh on rating these pumpkins. What do you think? Pumpkin spice pretzels. Did we go over the rating scale? I can't remember. Yes. Well good, because I want to give it a dislike that. <laughs> they are bad. Uh <laughs> Did we at least cover just like that? We, <laughs> I don't okay, care yeah. about much of the scale. Really just the lower two-thirds um, or two-fifths, I should say. Um, yeah, it's bad. It's I didn't think they'd be good, to be honest. And for some reason, I did not. I bought these. I did not read the package at all. I still went into this thinking it might be a savory snack with just like some seasoning on it. It's not. They're covered in white chocolate socks, first of all. Get that out of the way. Second of all, I like pumpkin pie. I don't necessarily love pumpkin flavored stuff. I'm not one of these people that gets there's a, my Facebook feed lights up with like people talking about pumpkin spice lattes and pumpkin spice yada yada like every fall. I don't get it. The only pumpkin spice thing I like is pumpkin pie. Uh, this is not that. This is not good. I don't like it. 
it covers up the whole point of eating a pretzel, which is for something salty. Um, this is, there's not even like a salty sweet contrast. It's just sweet. And I think it's not good. I give it a strong dislike that. All right. A dislike to start. Chad, what do you think? Yeah. Double up on a dislike that. It's too sweet. If there was some regular chocolate here, maybe it would be good. I don't even actually really taste pumpkin spice. It's just kind of generic sugar with some medium to low quality pretzels underneath. So yeah, th- this is not good. Can't recommend it. Uh, dislike that. All right. We've got an unwelcome visitor. They're not offensive, but they're not good at all. Like Geiger said, you can't taste the pretzel. There needs to be some kind of saltiness to it. They'd have been much better served, as you suggested, of just having a regular pretzel with some like some kind of a pumpkin-flavored spice sprinkled over the top that would at least make them desirable. In this case, uh, we all think they are bad. So three dislikes, the unwelcome visitor. Um, let's move next to... Um, Let's do the almonds, cranberries, and macadamia nuts fruit and nut bar. So we're going with this because it has the word cranberries in it. (laughs) (laughs) So that makes it Thanksgiving themed. (laughs) The company is Good and Gather. And uh, like I said, it's almonds, cranberries, and macadamia nuts fruit and nut bar. I've never seen this brand before this brand of this looks like another target brand if you look at the back it says like distributed by target i did buy it at target yeah but it is gluten-free i'm hoping my throat doesn't close from the almond (laughs) you're the one that bought this asshole (laughs) we need a cranberry it is so dry if you die i'm gonna write dipshit kill themselves on your gravestone (laughs) (laughs) this is the only usually dipshit don't kill themselves at your funeral, I'm going to hire strokes to come. <laughs> Novak, just you keep talking like that. It's going to be the end of our eat ship. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chad, you're up first. Tell us what you think. This thing's terrible. It's super dry. Like I only took one bite and set it down. It just is It like instantly dried out my mouth like cinnamon challenge style. There's no redeeming flavors in it, except I got a tiny bit of cranberry that was okay. But this thing's awful. Hate that. It's It tastes terrible. Wow. What is so offensive about a bunch of nuts and cranberries? It's so dry. I, I'm i so far the other direction. I actually, I'm enjoying it. <laughs> I, I am, am eating most of it. I could easily eat these again. I would consider getting them. I've gotten some other other uh, varieties of this type of bar and they seem like a little too sweet this one just i think is more of the natural sweetness of some of these ingredients and i I think it tastes good i'm gonna give it a like that so we've got a like that and a hate geiger who are you leaning more towards yeah well definitely novak especially with the vehemence that chad said that i this is like your garden variety nut bar i don't know why what makes this so disgusting it's like you just it's just like nuts and some cran dry cranberries like it's a trail mix in a stick now i do have to i can't eat a lot of it because i am allergic to almonds so i don't want to eat like a bunch of like just fistfuls of it especially because it's not possible because it's a bar um but i would say i would You're just eat. fisting that bar <laughs> that's how you take your bars <laughs> is you just crumple them up in your fist like the incredible hulk and then just shove them in <laughs> oh hulk nutritious um I think it tasted fine. I, I think it's a like that. If I could eat them, I, I can't. But if I could, I would. I think the cranberry, there's there. I think sometimes my problem with these bars that we've had in the past is there's not enough of the fruit to counterbalance the nut taste. But I thought there's a decent amount of cranberry in it and it was like a right amount of dirt. I like the flavor of the nuts. And like Novak said, it's not overly sweet. So I liked it. I would give it a like that. I just uh, can't eat it. <laughs> okay. Two likes and a hate. So. <laughs> Interesting set of ratings, but it's definitely in the running um, against some of these uh, kind of weirder foods that we're trying today. So uh, we'll stop in the middle here and do our segment. And Chad, you have a Thanksgiving segment for us? Yeah, it's Thanksgiving time. And we have talked a lot about Thanksgiving sna- or Thanksgiving side dishes on the podcast before. Uh, but I thought it was time to to really put down the definitive list and come up with the absolute Thanksgiving Mount Snackmore, a.k.a. Mount Thanksgiving (laughs) More. Now, 
look, I know there are a lot of, lot, a lot of things that can be Thanksgiving side dishes, right? But we have to limit it to 10 here. So I had to pick 10. So listeners, if I didn't include your favorite, don't get mad. Don't at me. Well, actually do at us. Send us a email with uh, what your favorites are that we left off the list. I shouldn't be telling the listeners not to engage. <laughs> They're doing a great job of that already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, all right, here's the 10 that we're going to do. Mashed potatoes, scalloped potatoes, stuffing, cranberry sauce, green bean casserole, candied yams, sweet potato casserole, roasted Brussels sprouts, corn pudding, last but not least, dinner rolls. So you guys got all 10 of those? This is the oddest bunch of things. So one obvious omission there that I personally love, mac and cheese. Uh, I always try to have mac and cheese at our Thanksgivings, but I left it off because it's not something that you, like you people eat mac, or at least I eat mac and cheese year round, you know, whereas some of these other ones, you know, I I guess I eat dinner rolls year round, but like I'm not really going to get stuffing anytime outside of Thanksgiving generally. Can you help me out? What is corn pudding? Sure. So it's kind of like uh, cornbread, but in like uh, sort of like a big uh, casserole dish. This is like soupy. Yeah, right. Like, uh, yeah, like a, a not not super soupy, but just like in a cast iron skillet kind of thing, like a, like a corn, almost like the consistency of like a quiche sort of. OK. All right. I've got my numbers. Um, we'll start at the top at 10. I've got this. I'm going to bring this down. T- I'm going to try to bring it downtown. I know I'm. we'll see if I can keep it out of the top four. I don't like sweet potatoes. It's not a popular opinion. I understand that. But the sweet potato casserole is number 10. It would be the last on these things that I would reach for. Uh, number nine, that corn pudding. Well, I was a little confused like Gagger, but it did not sound good. Uh, I'm going to put it at number nine. <laughs> uh, number eight, the yams. I'm a huge yams fan. Uh, seven, the cranberry sauce. I just... I. I I feel like people just have it at the meal because they're supposed to. They feel like that is a required part of the Thanksgiving meal. Uh, now, this is to where those bottom four I likely would pass on at a lot of Thanksgiving meals. These top six I would take. Starting with number six, the roasted Brussels sprouts uh, is my number six. Now, Geiger, you you regularly cook the Brussels sprouts when we uh, do Thanksgiving uh, foods together. Correct. Um, number five, the scalloped potatoes. Hmm. Interesting. It's potato. Can't get barely get wrong with the potatoes. Number four, the dinner rolls. Um, it seems like a silly pick, but uh, I, I regularly double and triple up, uh, if not more, on the rolls at Thanksgiving. And number three, the stuffing. Number two, the green bean casserole. I am a fan. And number one, with no close second, the mashed pea. <laughs> mashed potatoes. <laughs> now here's the thing. I don't eat. There's. I'm too lazy to peel and cook mashed potatoes right. in the regular course of the year. So I don't, I, and I love them. So I go heavy on the mashed potatoes at Thanksgiving. I always look forward to them. That is my number one. I never eat mashed potatoes like from me cooking them. It's always either Thanksgiving or out at a restaurant, but I, I also do love them. We occasionally have like potato buds or those like prepackaged potato mixes that you just whip up. Those aren't nearly as good. So that's usually the only mashed potatoes I have in the interim. Betsy once in a while makes some good garlic mash, but I'm with you. I don't normally get them outside of a meal that someone else made or at a restaurant or something. GMAB, you want to go? Are you done? Sure, I'm done. I don't think I'm too far off from what Noah liked up, but we do have some some key differences. Uh, So again, I'll start at 10. I'm putting corn pudding because I've never had it and it sounded disgusting. I'm sure it wouldn't be. Uh, I like corn bread, but just a the thought of like a wet corn meal doesn't sound great uh nine cranberries i don't really like cranberries that much to be honest in this bar they're okay but like that jellied cranberry or cranberry sauce just i don't get what you're supposed to are you supposed to eat it like by itself just like like jello or something just slap it down and then eat like a scoop of it or mix it with some stuffing maybe that's dumb um (laughs) agreed eight now, controversial maybe scalloped potatoes were pretty low on my list. I don't, I don't wow. mind scalloped potatoes. To me, there's wow. much better potato items on this list that, I, like, honestly, from eight on, I, I like all the stuff. I would eat all the stuff. So eight is scalloped potatoes, but I like scalloped potatoes. They're just of all the things I'm going to go back for for seconds of these. They're at eight. 
Seven are candied yams. I do like yam and yam related food. Six, uh, dinner rolls. I, I want to, part of me wants to put rolls higher because I really like dinner rolls. It's just, they're just kind of like a staple. They're not something, like I said, I'll eat three or four of them, but it's hard to put them too high unless there are some sort of fancy ass roll. Five, mashed potatoes. I like mashed potatoes, don't get me wrong, but mashed potatoes are just kind of there. To me, mashed potatoes are very dependent on how they're made or like the gravy or whatever, like the other pieces of it. They're a great staple again, but I'm not going to go crazy for them. These top four are things I really, really enjoy. For Novak mentioned it, I love Brussels sprouts. They might have become my favorite vegetable. I do try to make them for, I, I believe when I've made them for our joint Thanksgivings, no one eats them but me and a handful of others, but that's fine. At least they're there for me. Um, bacon, onion, some butter. They're great. Three is sweet potato casserole. And it was really tough for me between three and two. I, I love sweet potato casserole. A little marshmallow on top and some brown sugar and maybe some people put nuts on them. They're so soft. I love sweet potatoes in general. Um, sometimes we just have a right. We also just make sweet potato, like baked sweet potato. And that's fine too. But man, sweet potato casserole is good. It's like dessert while you're eating. I don't think you can go bad there. Two, I love mise and green bean casserole. This is one that is newer for me. I never had that growing up. We never made it at Thanksgiving uh, until I started going to other people's Thanksgivings is when I was exposed to it. And I love it now, um, but we never ate it before. In fact, we never really had sweet potato casserole either. We just had regular baked sweet potatoes. So those two I've really come to love. But number one, I've, the, the, the side dish I have always loved about Thanksgiving is stuffing. I love the stuffing. I love the stuffing pr- more than the turkey. I've said this before. Turkey probably wouldn't even be in my – turkey would hover around mashed potatoes for me on this list, around five. I love stuffing. We made two kinds of stuffing uh, growing up, um, one more of like a mushier kind of all-melted-together one and one with like bread cubes and potato and stuff. I love stuffing so much. Um, in fact, it's kind of dumb. I like it so much. I should probably just eat it more year round. I just only tend to have it at Thanksgiving. So that is my list. Turkey would be two for me. I know you guys have both talked about how you don't love the turkey and Thanksgiving, but turkey would be. No, I love the turkey. I have for me. Oh, okay. I would, I would actually put turkey above all the sides. I love turkey when it's done right. All right, Chad, what's your list? Okay. So in typical Chad fashion, I am going to do my absolute best to torpedo the fuck out of all the vegetables. <laughs> so uh, coming in at the bottom here for me is Brussels sprouts. I think Brussels sprouts are so gross. Like to me, they are maybe the worst veggie besides cauliflower. I'm not sure. They're bad. Then number nine, green bean casserole. I'd never understood green bean casserole. Uh, to me, it's like just too too much green beans and green beans aren't good <laughs> eight <laughs> yeah the thing about green meat casseroles is it's largely green beans <laughs> so that's my main problem with it <laughs> the casserole is fine which is the green beans where i really draw the line eight i'm going corn pudding uh if it was cornbread then i'd probably put that higher but yeah corn pudding i have had it before it's it's really nothing special seven cranberry sauce i don't like that jello kind of cranberry sauce i think i mentioned on this podcast before that i have a cranberry orange relish recipe that i make which is for thanksgiving which is really really good much better than cranberry sauce cranberry sauce itself terrible number six now we're into the stuff that i actually do like uh candied yams i do like candied yams but sometimes they can be a little bit too sweet depending on what's on them so those are down at number six for me, number five, stuffing. I do Man. like stuffing, but it has to be the right stuffing. I have had a lot of bad stuffing in my day. Number four, dinner rolls. Who doesn't love a good dinner roll? And I feel like especially at Thanksgiving, you get those like small sort of like Hawaiian style dinner rolls a lot and you put some butter on them. Those things are awesome. You can totally house those. Number three, the, my last three are all potato dishes because I do love potatoes. Number three, I'm going sweet potato casserole. I really love sweet potato. Like, I would rather have a baked sweet potato than a baked regular potato. But sweet potato casserole is just a little bit lower for me than these other two. So coming down here, number two, I'm going mashed potatoes. And number one, scallop potatoes. I love, love, love scallop potatoes. Scallop potatoes? Those can be your, like, hard, Well, if though. you do them right, they have, like, awesome cheese on it. I love cheese with potatoes, and, like, it's just, like, a really good consistency. So, yeah, to me, scalloped potatoes is the best. I am interested. I have no idea what who's going to end up winning this. I'm interested to... Yeah. Yeah, we got a lot of variety there. So, all right. 
Well, Mash P might be, I think, the winner. So at the bottom here of the overall rankings with 27 points, I think no surprise, corn pudding. Uh, <laughs> half of us have two thirds of us haven't even had it. Uh, <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> Next up, also, I think no surprise with 23 points, cranberry sauce. None of us really like cranberry sauce. So a little surprised about this next one. Coming in at 21 points is candied yams. But I guess uh, nobody really likes them here. Uh, then, I'm um, sorry to say this, but I did successfully torpedo it. Coming in, in in next slot, seventh, roasted Brussels sprouts with 20 points. And then our last uh, non-medalist here with 16 points. Sweet potato casserole. So that's a little bit disappointing. But yes, Ooh. I took it down. No, man, you piece I of took it shit. Down. I took it down. <laughs> you both took down two of my top four. four. All right, now who's crazy hard? Now, <laughs> we have a tie for fourth place. So I'm not sure who gets to be crazy horse. There's two of the, did somebody, two of us had to rate them higher, I assume. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Okay, so here's what it's going to be. So crazy horse, both of these have 14 points. The tie is between scallop potatoes and dinner rolls. I'm the only one that likes that ranked scallop potatoes higher than dinner rolls. So we're going to give Crazy Horse to scallop potatoes <laughs> in the fifth place slot there. Where it belongs. Crazy Horse is well known for liking his cheesy potato. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so then fourth place there also with 14 points is dinner rolls. So that gets the, the, the first slot on the Thanksgiving Mount Snack more. Then... Third place with 13 points is green bean casserole. You guys both uh, like that one enough. You both put it second, so that was enough to bring it on there, even though I hate it. All right, so this was a close one. Second place Ooh. with nine points, stuffing. No. And our top Mount Snackmore, no. the George Washington position with eight points is mashed potatoes. So just to recap, our top four, mashed potatoes, stuffing, green bean casserole, and scallop potatoes. Oh, no, dinner rolls. Scallop potatoes was crazy horse. My bad. <laughs> All right. That will do it for Thanksgiving meat mount snack more or whatever we're calling it now. So <laughs> uh, <laughs> We've got two snacks left. Um, next up is the Pringles roasted turkey flavor. Now, um, I've been really interested to try these ever since um, I, Geiger delivered them to me. Because this is just a bizarre flavor for a chip. So strange. I got very excited. I happened to walk by an end cap at Jewel, a local grocery store, and I saw these. We already had three Thanksgiving snacks, but this is could not be a more perfect food to try here. A worthy addition. And can I just say, the art on this packaging <laughs> is hilarious. <laughs> It's like a, a cooked, fully cooked turkey on a plate, legs crossed and everything. And then with, uh, what's his name? Julius Pringles. <laughs> yes. His, his cartoon head on top where the turkey head is supposed to be. They smell bad. <laughs> and wait till you taste it. I just tasted one. Yeah. Oh, just God. wait till you taste them. <laughs> they don't smell like turkey. I guess I don't know what I expect them to smell like. They somehow taste like roasted turkey. I don't even know how it's possible. But they taste like turkey. Yeah. Is, does yours have like turkey juice in it? Because mine, that's probably why. <laughs> right. Is yours an actual turkey? Because that's probably why. <laughs> oh wait, I'm actually, I'm actually like eating a turkey leg. Oops. Is it turkey juice, or is uh, do your kids just like to piss in the Pringles cans? <laughs> Ugh. It's it does taste like turkey. There's no question. But it's a weird flavor for a chip. It's weird. It's off. It's kind of off putting. Oh, the turkey's like, I don't know. It's not that like in your face with the turkey flavor. These are weird as fuck. <laughs> I I will start. No, these have the same texture, crumbly texture as any old Pringles chip. I, they, they deserve points for flavor accuracy. But just because you can make something does not mean you should. This is the <laughs> perfect example of that. These are fucking terrible. They're so bad. Um, Geiger's just putting them back. <laughs> Mr. Chip, true to his name. <laughs> it's The taste is so off-putting. I don't want turkey flavor in a chip. Um, I, I ate one, and I, I did not want to eat any more. They smell terrible. Um, I'm sorry to do this to millennial hipster Julius Pringle, but I hate that. So, wow. Geiger, what do you think, Mr. Chip? I just pictured you like saying that like uh 
like Jeff Goldblum in Jurassic Park, like they made the Pringles chip, but they never stopped to think if they should or whatever. That's my job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, it's different. I, I so, so I, I think <laughs> yeah, <it> is. <laughs> knowing that it's a roasted turkey helped me with the flavor. Cause I bet you if we had just blind taste tested these, you would have been here a million years before you get roasted turkey. Mm-hmm. And that's probably cause to your point, that seems inconceivable. <laughs> like, you need to wait. You need to somehow put a, some Jurassic Park line into your rating. Slip it in somehow. Okay. Well, how about this? I'll do a Jeff Goldblum line. All right. Uh, from the fly. <laughs> it's like when I opened these, I was like, <laughs> I did not know any other. What's the, well, the only other famous Jurassic Park line is what? Okay. Here. I'll, this is what I'll say. If I was looking, is, let's say Julius Pringle's wife suggested this flavor. Yeah. And then Julius Pringle was like, oh, I don't think we can do that. And she's like, oh, here's how you do it. And showed him the spice mix. And then he turned to her and went, clever girl. <laughs> uh, that would work. There you go. I will say, though, I like them. I, they're, it's like a salty, it's like that savory, salty mix. It's It doesn't taste so much like turkey that my brain is revolting at the idea of eating a chip that has the flavoring on it. They're not like uh, my favorite chip. And the aftertaste is weird. It tastes even more like turkey somehow afterward. I give it a like that, though. They're tasty. Um, I'll eat them. I probably won't buy them again because I'd rather have a regular Pringle. But I see nothing wrong with them. They're good. Whew. It is also uncannily impressive how they've managed to match the, the flavor. So, Chad, your rating and your Jurassic Park line go. I'll give you a couple because I have seen Jurassic Park many times. When I first opened this can, I was like, hold on to your butts. And then as I looked at them, <laughs> I thought, oh, this is a chip. I know this. Except it, it's not a Linux system, so it doesn't that line doesn't work. Anyways, and then in the background, I could hear, ah, 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 you didn't say the magic word. That was Julius Pringle in the background as I was eating it. Right. <sighs> anyway... <laughs> Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally, when I saw Julius Pringle, I said, after careful consideration, I have decided not to endorse your chip. <laughs> Look, I. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, much like Ben Smith, the key grip. And <laughs> <laughs> then I said, I can't eat these chips without Dennis Nedry. <laughs> so i actually don't think this is that off the wall of an idea for a flavor because as we just went over there are a lot of potato dishes that you eat at thanksgiving with turkey so that like turkey potato combo is something that you know we're all pretty familiar with i, I don't think they're that bad but like the problem is that they are pringles like the flavor is not horrible. And I actually think if these were like a more substantial chip with like better texture or something like a ruffles or something like that, I'm, I might actually like these, but just the fact that they're Pringles, the consistency of the Pringles really brings them down for me. Uh, but I'm just going to give them an indifferent to that. They're fine. All right. We are spread out. Um, so not a terrible showing that Gagger's like, but Pringles still uh, not in the lead. It's the fruit and nut bar out in, in front. Uh, so let's get our last snack. And it's the... I don't have the package for it, Geiger, so you could tell us maybe more about it. I just have the individual ones. It is a pumpkin spice harvest caramel from Werther's Original. So it's like a soft, chewy caramel that is supposed to taste like pumpkin spice. I tend to like these these soft caramels like this. This is the type of caramel I enjoy generally, but I'm not a huge pumpkin fan, so it should be interesting. I tend not to like soft caramels like this. These are really soft. Uh, <laughs> I don't. I don't taste any pumpkin. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that was that was me do, quoting the T Rex. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say if we had to do quotes again. I'd be screwed. Like Chris Pratt said in the latest one, <laughs> there's a raptor. <laughs> Look over there, a T Rex. <laughs> so that's me quoting a T Rex, and then. Here's me quoting Strokes the Clown. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> what? <laughs> he had no vocal cords? What happened? <laughs> little, this is more to Strokes' backstory. He also, his <laughs> tongue was cut out. He <laughs> was raised by primates. <laughs> <laughs> when you're being assaulted, it's 
definitely been told to be very off-putting when he's just gumming your shoulder the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Why is he... He has no teeth either? Correct. <laughs> 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 nothing in the mouth really it's totally clear right, hold on <laughs> Se- second hold on it's just off-putting huh <laughs> when you're getting sexually assaulted at the bottom of the foam pit and he's mouthing your shoulder it's just mildly unpleasant is that it it's adding insult to injury well, i mean it's not as bad as a uh, corn pudding <laughs> <laughs> he's corn pudding his penis inside you though <laughs> I should say clown pudding. Let's edit that. Clown pudding is beer inside uh, you, but I'm chap. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, whose turn to start? This is Gagger. Tell us about these caramels. I think it's really... Oh, oh, oh. oh my God, do you hear that? <laughs> He's somewhere nearby. Um, <laughs> these are um, not great for me. It's got two things I don't love. One... It's, I mean, they get wedged in your teeth. These are really, yeah. really sticky. And that's an unpleasant or off-putting feeling. <laughs> that's a, that's a <laughs> strokes the clown is behind you style feeling. Right. Somewhat I'm, off-putting. I'm really gumming these now because they're stuck in my actual gums. And uh, it's <laughs> off-putting. Uh, <laughs> secondly, as I said before, the pumpkin spice flavor is my favorite unless it's actual pumpkin pie, which... Might be one of my favorite desserts ever, but I would much rather have just a regular caramel. To me, like the what you, what's good about caramel, especially some versions of it, is it's got a salty flavor, and it is one of the few like sweet salty things I think works really well, especially when you use caramel with other sweets like chocolate and stuff. This is just too sweet. It's too sticky. They're actually not small pieces either. It's kind of a big piece of caramel to eat at once. It gets all goopy inside your mouth. So I'll give it a. Hmm. They're not horrible. I'm torn between an indifferent and a dislike. (sighs) I will go a very, very, very mild indifferent. Like if someone handed me another one, I was like, yeah, sure, I'll eat it. Like if it came in a candy bag or something, I'm like, fine. But I don't don't love them that much. All right, an indifferent to start. Chad, what do you think of these things? They're not as gross as I thought they would be. They're still gross. But um, I, I was expecting a sort of a lot worse. They're okay. I don't actually taste any pumpkin at all. I just taste generic sweetness. And the thing that drags it down is the consistency. I don't like how chewy it is, it getting stuck in my teeth, that kind of stuff. So these are going to get a dislike that for me. All right. A dislike. Um, I like these. Now, I expected not to because I didn't. I was not looking forward to the pumpkin flavor. And as you said, there's little to no pumpkin flavor in these at all. Um, if you didn't tell me they were pumpkin before you gave one to me, I wouldn't tell. I wouldn't guess that that's what it was. I like the soft caramels like this. I could probably um, put a lot of these back. So I'm going to go with a like that, which, um, according to the scorecard here, gives us a tie, I do believe, between the fruit and nut bar and the caramels. Yep. So tie there. Did, did Was there two of us that liked? Well, I guess I don't know if, how, how you would decide a, a tiebreaker on that. But Two of us like the bar. You and I like the bar. And Chad hated it. That it actually got two likes, two higher yeah. ratings. Eh, no one gives a fuck who wins anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, glad you stayed through an hour and a half of that. <laughs> In the end, shrug. <laughs> In the end, strokes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it does prove the, the various ratings have its different strokes for different folks. <laughs> um, I mean, we each have different clowns and strokes that are chasing us. They so they also say that like a tie, a tie is not good. A tie is like gumming your sister, is what I think this is saying. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've heard that. I've heard um, that. All right, so uh, Geiger, I'm sure mm-hmm. people are frantically trying to get a hold of us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, everyone, <laughs> if you have topics or, or opinions on topics as far-ranging as Thanksgiving side items, meat-flavored chips, odd guys you meet at trampoline parks, you can reach us at youtrydat at gmail.com, uh, on Twitter, hashtag youtrydat, 
Facebook group, you tried that. SoundCloud, Instagram, YouTube, Stitcher, anywhere else you get your murderous, creepy clown fetish uh, material, uh, your fanfic, if you will. Um, probably Reddit, I assume, which is just a cesspool of shit. Uh, that's right. I'm throwing shots at Reddit. Um, at me, Reddit. Reddit sucks. Yeah. Fuck Reddit. <laughs> um, yeah, let us know. And obviously, give it, especially about your, your opinions on Thanksgiving items. And um, I, it is probably a good time when I say what I am thankful for. It, I, I am very thankful for the listeners we do have um, and for listening every week. It would, I would, this is fun for us to do, and we would do it regardless, but it does mean a lot that there are people out there and enjoy it. So thank you very much. Absolutely. All right. So the Thanksgiving episode. Um, is there, Chad, you mentioned mac and cheese. Are there any other sides that you guys that were not on the list today, something that you really, really look forward to having? Maybe it's something specific to your family that's maybe most families don't eat at Thanksgiving. Is there anything you can think of that sticks out? Or maybe it's just something that, if you can't have an answer for that, that someone in your family makes like a dynamite version of? Uh, Yeah. So I will deep fry the, the turkey when we do Thanksgiving over at, at my wife's parents. And well, the first time I did that, my mother-in-law was like, oh, this is a perfect excuse. You have the deep fryer. You know, let's deep fry some um, uh, like shrimp and pork dumplings. So she made a bunch of shrimp and pork dumplings. And then uh, we put them in the deep fryer while we were wait after we'd taken the turkey out while we were waiting for it to like, you know, you have to wait for it to cool to like room temp or whatever for 20 minutes or something. Uh, so we just did that. And like those turned out to be delicious because they had a little bit of that turkey flavor kind of juiced into it, you know, still from the oil. And then... The dumplings themselves are great. And so now we've done that sort of like every year after that. Um, and th- that's been like a really, really nice addition. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Um, my grandmother, I can't remember if she does it at Christmas or Thanksgiving, which is why I'm hesitating. But she also makes a really good Christmas meal. Um, and one of the sides oh, we'll sometimes do there is uh, twice baked potato instead of mashed or scalloped, which is also really tasty. Oh, a so. nice spot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So... But so that's a nice one. But I, oh, the more they think about it, I think that's more at thanks or at uh, Christmas and Thanksgiving. But I'm trying to think, uh, uh, not dessert related. I think we hit most of the the high points for a thing a tea giving, if you will. Novak, how about you? Um, I've had it at a couple times, and I do like this. We talked about never really making mashed potatoes, um, and I've had it a, a time or two at Thanksgiving is to mash the red potatoes. Um, I think mashed red done correctly are potentially better than a straight mashed, but they they can be worse if not done right. But uh, I would I would say the red potatoes are a nice surprise at Thanksgiving time. Yeah, I think we always do red potatoes. I think I think red potato is better than like a traditional russet potato a hundred times out of a hundred. Like I'd always rather have red potato. We've also made um, I've ha- I've also had like squash. Like butternut squash kind of mashed up with butter and salt and stuff. That's really good. I like that. You just like roast mm. it or uh, bake it and then just squ- like carve it up with a fork. You cut it in half and just scoop it out. That's really good. And Novak, your wife, I think I've had it since by other people, but your wife is the first person that has ever made the phenomenon known as White Castle stuffing for me, Yeah, which was actually pretty good. That's the only way I've had White Castle. I've actually never had a slider. I had not had slider one, but I've had sliders in stuff. What, what is that? You just take the sliders and cut them up and more or less. Yeah, I forget what else you I think there's some addition you put in there and when you cook it. But yeah, it's basically like torn up sliders. You get turkey Pringles and stuff. That sounds revolting because yeah. White Castle is awful. I do hate White Castle, too. It's it is better in that stuffing form for whatever reason. Um, like the, I think you like cook some of that like nasty grease off of those quote unquote patties that are on there. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, all right. So final question, would you rather eat nothing but White Castle sliders for an entire month, right? So whatever that, whatever that does to your digestive system, yeah. whatever happens, happens, uh-huh. as I like to say. And what does the clown do to us? Or... <laughs> I'm getting there. <laughs> or you spend 10 minutes in the ball pit with strokes. Whatever happens, happens. Now, can I like fight him off or like talk to him about sports or something you could or... try but he's strong as fuck so i mean it's... <laughs> i mean it's the ball pit so i can just piss all over him right like that's what summon my army of children to come and just start urinating on strokes way ahead of you he loves that you've taught a bunch of children to whip their dicks out around you that's all smart 
Oh, wait, are you strokes? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I got a surprise for you. <laughs> Here's my clown nose I'm putting on. <laughs> I also guess I don't know what kind of sports I'm going to talk about him with. All he can say is, Urgh! Urgh! <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Urgh, locker! Uh... <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm, I'm eating White Castle. <laughs> I can eat shitty fast food. If there's one thing I've been training my whole life for, it's that. Was that a, what is a specific strokes the clown joke like asking a dog what's on top of a house like hey strokes what's your favorite football player Erlocker <laughs> 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 What's your favorite restaurant uh, I like Max and Irma <laughs> <laughs> Hey strokes what's your favorite Jurassic Park quote Clever girl <laughs> <laughs> I, no, Meg, if you're implying that I spent time pre-writing jokes for a side tangent that we would make up a character on the spot and he would have a speech impediment, you're correct. Yeah, I did that for like sure. Wendy Williams and her fucking pre-written lines. Where we can spin, where we can come out and spin gold like this out of thin air. <laughs> Man, that was the end of me and Strokes' is ship. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's call oh, it. Oh boy! Uh, well, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. <laughs> I think we called it a lot sooner, and we just didn't realize. Happy Thanksgiving! So uh, we'll be back uh, next time, the upcoming month, to help you ring in the holidays. So stay with us through December. But we'll be back next time. We'll be trying out three brand new snacks. Deuces. Yep. Okay.